All right, here we are. Intro, how to art. Lesson number one. Haha. -ha. Let's dig into it together and see what we can find. So you always want to have a warm up when you're drafting, when you're drawing, when you're painting, anything that you do that involves your hands and creation. I like to start off with lots of circles. Um, I fill an entire page, little circles, big circles. Um, and I want to really use my whole arm when I'm doing this. So don't just flick your wrist around. Um, use your whole arm to feel the shape. And you want to try it both directions, left and right. Wake up those muscles. Step number two, know your shape. S, I, oh, yes, that is a plural, I'm sorry. Oh, goodness. Okay, let's try this. So, this is a cir, this is a cir, this is a circle, okay, close enough. Circles, squares, Bones. Yes, I know it's a 3D shape. I will explain that later. Um, rectangles. And ellipses. This is something that you don't see very often outside of the art world, but it's basically just a fancy artistic word for uh, an oval. Slightly different slightly different but basically everything everything that we see with our eyes is made up of shapes and it's important that we understand that before we even touch a pencil or a paintbrush this is an example of my triangle dog when she was first born she really basically looked like she was made up of triangles Wow The shapes aren't in 2D. The world isn't in 2D. We live in, believe it or not, a third dimension. Why? It's pretty grand. Wow. All right, so we're gonna start with a light source. We have sun, here he comes, hanging out. Oh yeah! To use this light source to tell the story of shape and dimension, you have to use light and shade and shadow in order to tell uh, weight, to tell dimension. Ugh, struggling, struggling with circles again. Yes, yes, I know. Anyways, this is direction we have light coming from on our sphere, all right? Again, this is 3D, so a circle has become a sphere. Spheres have round light, and following that course of action, also have rounded shade or rounded shadows. Wow. Okay. But, let's take things slow. We don't want to go too quickly. We want to do it gradually. We want to use gradients. Now, I don't mean necessarily using the gradient tool, but thinking as if we are using that tool, thinking in the gradual. All right. So you'll notice I'm using Clip Studio Paint. I absolutely love it. I think it's really accessible. The price point is good. It's a beautiful program. Um, and really, I think, what I would recommend any young digital artist to work with. Brilliant! Brilliant! Now, you're going to notice that I tr 
try my best to stay away from blending tools. Um, quite often I will switch to the rubber to erase things rather than uh, using the blending tool if I can help it. If you look, it just washes it out quite a lot. And this is a big problem for a lot of digital artists. They basically have this kind of big blob of blending. Don't wash out your contrast. Trust me, that is so important and probably the biggest mistake I see with beginning digital artists. Okay, so I'm working on giving a bit more contrast in. And again, look, I'm trying my best to kind of use the blending tool very sparingly or only using uh, the watercolor tool, which is fabulous on this program. I really do recommend Clip Studio Paint. Okay, brilliant. All right. Let's talk about cubes. So obviously the 3D version of a square is a cube and I want you to have a look that these are all the same angels, I mean angles, <coughs> along this edge. They all have follow the exact same angles. So many artists do this. <coughs> no, it is not flat at the bottom because it exists in a flat space. It is going back into space, thus making it three dimensional. Here's our happy sun again, hanging out, shining down. Hello! Haha. -ha. Now, when we shade something that is geometric like this, inorganic like this, it's slightly different than when we shade something like a circle or a sphere. You're going to notice, obviously, this is the furthest side away from the sun, so we have it darkest. Then we have this side, which is, you know, moderately far from the sun, but not entirely. And of course the top, the one that's getting most light. Now I've already made a mistake with this that I want to show. Again, it's very similar to what we had with the sphere. We don't want to have the same tone on these, on these two planes. Also, when you're working with inorganic shapes, these geometric, you know, hard planed shapes you want to keep it even more or less so it shows it as a solid as a flat plane a flat surface and again let's bump up the contrast I apologize I'm using new graphics tablets so I'm still getting used to uh, how everything is and how it's working now, that just bumps up my contrast. It makes more dynamic drawing. It makes more interesting. Now, at the very bottom, I'm showing weight, especially on the dark side, by just throwing a little bit of extra shadow into that. You don't want to overdo that unless you're doing something called hard light, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But that just gives weight. It shows that I'm interacting with another surface, i.e. the table here. That's the line behind. It shows weight, it shows depth. Here we are, sun again. Yo, pick up the phone. Now, we're gonna talk about cylinders here. And this is probably the most common. And it's quite difficult to draw cylinders, especially the bottom for me, might not be for you. <laughs> God, good for you. Uh, basically, this is how I do that, is I basically make two ellipses, one on the top, one on the bottom, and then I just rub out the uh, top bit of the bottom one there, as you can wow. see. Wow. Now, when we have the sun coming down on a cylinder, it's, it's very different. It's almost a combination of the two uh, techniques that we've used before. So, obviously, again, we have the darkest area being the furthest from the light just as we've done in our last two instances. However, things will change a little bit because what we need to do is follow these hard edges at the bottom. If you'll notice, I've 
kind of followed that shade just around that bottom edge, just to show that it isn't a flat plane. I'm following, uh, you know, the, the curve. Now, I've shown something here that we talked about earlier. This is an example of uh, much too harsh shading. However, this would be called hard light, right? And this would be if your light is right up on there. He's shining as hard as he can right on that side. But when you do this, this is the kind of light you want to have. If you have, you know, like a flash of light, um, somebody's looking into very strong light, but not in our instance. Taking him away. Thank you very much, hard light. We didn't need you. Now, I'm going to try and blend this again, that gradual, take it slow aspect that we have to shading, but we don't want to lose our contrast. Now, cylinders, I was saying that these are quite common um, shape for things to be made out of. If you're doing uh, physical drawing, if you're doing um, life studies, um, any kind of life drawing, any kind of OC characters, uh, humans, animals, mostly made out of cylinders. Um, think about legs, arms, torsos as cylinders. Think about the shade that's incorporated in that. Now on the top, we have a flat plane again. And so I want to give a little bit of graduation to that. Right. Again, I'm trying to be more or less very sparing, perhaps not sparing enough um, with my blender. You know, look at that. I've basically taken away my um, contrast entirely, which isn't what we want to do. So you'll see I'm darkening up and following the upper part of that line of that cylinder as well. So this kind of shape drawing, this kind of um, shading practice is something I'd recommend for anybody to try at least once in their life. Um, artists, if you haven't done it yet, please just try it. You know, it can take about 20 minutes. It doesn't need to be a long experiment, but I really do recommend it. Um, and even I will go back to it um, when I'm having, uh, you know, just kind of a mental block on light and how it interacts with my subject. Um, you know, either set up a few of these items, things like Pringle cans for cylinders, um, you know, it's it's harder to find cones, examples like that, um, balls for spheres. Have a look at what you have around the house, or um, again, you can try to envision it in your mind. Um, I wouldn't do that unless you were quite uh, comfortable with this. Perhaps you'd done it in school before. Um, now look, we're just going in and trying to graduate that a little bit. Again, that more or less flat shading on the top shows that it's a flat surface, but we need to follow those rounded edges on the tops and on the bottom just to show that it's a cylinder and not a flat surface on the side. And again, make it gradual. I could have made it a lot more gradual in this uh, tutorial as well. This isn't about precision. This isn't about expertise. This is about filling in gaps. This is about um, understanding shadow. This is an exercise. Haha, <laughs> here he comes. Mr. Sun again is playing our highlight. Now we're going to talk about cones. Now cones are a bit difficult, a bit different. Again, we have a very similar thing uh, that we had with our cylinders and the fact that we have a rounded edge on the bottom. But of course we come to a point. Now, there's a little bit more complexity with this shape and we're going to talk about mid-tones and um, it's a little bit more complex than a lot of people think. So we're going in and we're putting in, you know, a bit of a highlight here. So the reason I didn't say triangles is very few things are made up of true triangles uh, in nature. Um, normally what you're going to find is cones, uh, dog ears, cat ears, um, more or less conic shapes obviously they're flat but they follow much of the same laws um, as uh, a conic shape gets shaded now again don't rely too much on that blur tool looking back at this i think i would have gone a little bit lighter on it it, it, it reads um 
it doesn't read well. It doesn't read well as a digital artist. Now, this is me adding my mid-tone on the side. Watch the left side of this cone. Sorry, I'm always getting my right and left mixed up. Who doesn't do that? Okay. Darkening, adding contrast. Now my highlight isn't directly on the side of the cone. You'll notice that my highlight is further back. If you're looking at getting a blended reaction, try using the uh, rubber or eraser or even um, using your brush and erasing to um, the checkerboard or the transparency. Now, of course, we have our dark here. I want to go quite dark on this just to give uh, contrast. Follow that bottom edge. And again, a slight, slight darker uh, edge along the highlighted edge, giving us a mid-tone. And the highlight actually res resides a little bit halfway through this cone. It's not right on the edge. All right, and with that, that is the conclusion of our very first how-to art lesson. Um, I'm looking always for constructive criticism. This is my first video, so I apologize. Uh, anything you think I can do better, we will be discussing other topics. Anything you're interested in covering, let me know. We will have a uh, next video. This is Peahead Peahead Incorporated saying, Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.